Charlie Parsons Boxing Social and Association of William Hill and Empire Fight Store gives me good pleasure to do this interview. Mr. Johnny Ward, we've been going back and forth for a while. Um, not many people in boxing based near or around Sirencester. You are one of them, along with Mark, who's just out there. Um, nice to finally catch up with you, brother. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you very much. How are you? Yes, good, mate. Good, mate. Thank you for making the time today. Um, let's talk first things first. Just done a couple, I don't know, a couple of weeks out in Canada, was it? Um, do you want to sort of speak about your experiences? I know you were with uh, Steve Rolls to name one. I mean, you'll be able to shed some light on it, but real good experiences for someone as young as yourself. Yeah, I've been out in Canada. Um, I was out for about four months, I think. I was only supposed to go for two weeks to see some family, but... Um, I ended up staying out there. I, I liked it a lot. The people were lovely, and obviously I got cut very bad in my last fight. Um, so I went out there a week later, had a couple of weeks rest, and then started sparring. Um, done some good rounds with Steve Rose, who obviously fought Golovkin. Very nice fella, good fighter, and a couple of other fellas. I think I sparred someone called John Michael Bianco. I think he's an Olympian. So yeah, I got some good work over there. I enjoyed it a lot. So we were having a little natter off camera, and I, I always ask people when they go. Uh, to the Middle East or to Thailand or to sort of Eastern Europe, the differences they find when they find themselves in a boxing gym, uh, boxing gym as opposed to sort of the environment that we've got here in the UK. Um, in Canada, what was the sort of thing that was most different about the game and the day-to-day -day training um, as opposed to over here in the UK? Uh, for one, it was minus 15, so it was freezing, <laughs> <laughs> it was freezing over there. And uh, the difference... Um, I don't know, to be honest, I thought it would have been a lot like America, because obviously I trained in America, it wasn't really like that. Um, not very much different, mate, you know, just the same routine. You, like, nice people, I will make you very welcome in the gyms. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it, it was good. Um, not much difference from what I no, know, to be honest. Not like America or nothing, you know. Fair play, Johnny. Um, let's talk a little bit about sort of, I suppose, the journey for you. It's the first time I've caught up with you for Boxing Social. Um, if we sort of take it back, sort of first lacing up the gloves, has it always been in your family? I mean, what what is it that sort of got you into boxing at the start? Um, for me, mate, uh, obviously it's, it's, in me, it's, in me, it's in my family, but me, me two brothers never boxed. I have two older brothers, they never boxed. And my dad never wanted me to box. He didn't care if I boxed. But uh, obviously, my mum's, my mum's, my mum's side, Andy Lee, um, there was a world champion, he's my cousin. Um, and I got obviously Tom, on my dad's side. I got obviously Thomas Patrick Ward um, from Durham. He's my first cousin, so I was always been around, you know. But for me, I don't know what I never had to do it. I never like had never pushed into it. It's just something I always done and I always enjoyed. Um, I started boxing at five years old, you know, and that's all I've ever done. It's just it's just it's part of my life now. It's nothing else comes to say. It's the only thing that I can do. <laughs> You're in the pro game. Um, I remember speaking to I think it was Andy Lee about you. Uh, that was a while back now, you're only 22. Um, whenever I speak to anyone about you, it's always such sort of exciting conversations because I've seen videos, etc. Yeah. and you're such an explosive puncher, um, your style's just fun to watch, etc. Is it for you now just getting the right opportunities and being able to give yourself that chance to sort of become a bit of a statement name here in the UK? Yeah, mate. Um Listen, boxing is a very hard game. You need a bit of luck every now and then, you know. And uh, obviously, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a massive ticket seller. I was a good amateur. Um, I won national titles and stuff. But to be honest, I stopped. I mean, last time I was fight 16. If I could have went back, I would have. I never boxed in the senior ABAs. I didn't box in the senior. I would have kept going, obviously. I didn't really. I thought you just turned pro and everything gets handed to you. And obviously, I, I realised that that's not the way. Um, but like I said, uh, like I said, you need a bit of luck. I just need the fights, mate. Uh, I turned pro at 19, so I'm I'm coming 23 in June. I've been pro nearly nearly four year. I've been everywhere. I've sparred everyone. Anyone who's any good, I've sparred. I've trained in the best camps in the country. But obviously, it's, it's different training than sparring when you ain't done the rounds. Uh, the max I've ever fought is four rounds. I think I box like seven rounds in, in three years, you know. So I, I need uh, I need the experiences and. Obviously, my last fight wasn't a good experience. I got cut, but it's an experience, you know. But I need the rounds, and uh, one, one more good, good, good six round on me, Ben, and I'll be ready to go, you know. Let's talk sort of a little bit about the uh, so struggles of getting fights for you recently, because I know Mark was trying to match you for the southern area, and we've almost been 
quite vocal on it in the fact that no one wants to take you. We found out that managers are turning down the fight without even asking their fighters, etc. Um, it almost seems a little bit like you're sort of in a position where you're ready to fight, you want to fight, you want to get that Southern Area title, you want to get a big opportunity, but, you know, people just aren't willing to take it necessarily. Yeah, mate. Um, as I've said to Mark loads of times, uh, any belt's good in pro boxing. Um, Obviously, like, but I'd like I'd like a belt, but I I couldn't not be bothered about a Southern Area title. You know, I'm more interested in the fights. Um, anyone out there wants one one sixty eight, one seventy five, any of you pussies want to have it for the Southern Area belt? Give me a call. But it's uh, it's it's not. Uh, give me a couple of good good rounds, two or three good fight uh, rounds, eight rounders. I'm ready to fight for a big title. Never mind a Southern Area title. You know, but obviously, no, no one wants it, does he? You know, everyone's trying to protect their stuff. No one wants it. But whoever wants it, give me a call. Um, sort of moving forward now, once you get the opportunity and once you're given that call, is it just seizing it? Because I suppose we hear time and time again about sort of the opportunities come, but it just the ain't, ain't the right time for you. Is it now channeling sort of the people you're around, making sure that everything that can be best for you is best for you, best environment, you've got a great team around you. Um, I remember Joseph Parker speaking really highly of you, etc. So you're clearly full of talent, it's just now sort of, given the platform to show it and, and people sort of stepping up a little bit, I suppose, to fight you? Exactly. Look, um, fight on April 22nd, uh, six, six, six rounds. Mark said he's getting me a decent opponent. Don't know who he is. Hopefully get six rounds in. Obviously, if I can knock him out, I'm going to knock him out. Hopefully get six rounds in and I'm ready to go with anyone. You know what I mean? Like I said to you, I, I, ain't, done, I ain't had enough. I, ain't ha I think I've had enough experience, but obviously mm -hmm. on paper, I've boxed four rounds. That's the most of my box. Get me a good six round under my belt. I don't see anyone. I'm seeing fighters 10 and 0 and 15 and 0 not, not jumping up. You know what I mean? So like I said, I'm only 5 and 0, I'm only 22. Get this fight away. Um, get good six rounds under my belt. And I'm ready to have it with anyone. Anyone in Britain, I'm ready to have it with. Anyone. For the people that haven't watched you, what would you sort of explain yourself? Oh, I've seen you, someone who's very explosive. You can counter punch a little bit as well. Um, come with real tenacity. Uh, yeah, how would you ex describe, uh, describe your style? It's funny, mate, because like I said, uh, if you watch me box as an amateur, I was a very, very good boxer, and I never really stopped many people as an amateur. Um, but I don't know what's happened over the past three or four years. I was turned to a, to a beast, you know what I mean? Whoever I'm hitting, and I mean any level, any level at all, even people who's that much farther than me, when I'm hitting them, they're feeling it, you know what I mean? Um, I know, I'm a good tall southpaw. I don't give much away. Uh, I'm very spiteful. If, if I can hurt you, I'm gonna hurt you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna jump off you. If I, can, I wanna hurt you. So that's what I try to do. Johnny, just a final word from you then. Um, nice to sort of do this, and I suppose first of many for us, definitely. We'll certainly be supporting your career on this side of it. I suppose to anyone out there then, a little message. You're ready. You just want the opportunities. Yeah, listen, as I said, yeah, anyone who wants it, people just trying to protect the records. This boxing game's a hard game. However, if you're on a big show, uh, if you've got a big promoter, small promoter, we get this fired away and let's get something going in the summer because I'm ready for anyone who is anyway. Johnny Ward, top man, thank you for speaking to us at Boxing Social. Pleasure.